you and they're like, hey, help me with this, help me with that. The first thing you need to do as a leader and say, that's a great question. How do you think we should solve that problem? Give me two options of how you're thinking. And the reason that you want to ask the teacher for options is twofold. Number one, you want them to start realizing you are not handicapping them. They need to use their brain. And when all of your people are using their brain, your school is going to dramatically become a better place because now it's not one brain, just your brain solving everyone's problems, but you have 20 brains working to solve the problem, which is always better. So that's the first thing is that you're just, you're dramatically going to build your school that much better. The other thing is, is that when teachers start sharing options with you, you can actually start to understand where their competency level is. So when a teacher comes to you and says, I'm not sure how to write an email to this parent. Can you help me? Well, how are you thinking to write it? And if she shares with you two options and you're like, wow, these teachers options are really not good. Like, I'm really glad she told me what these options are because she can never say that to a parent. Great. Now you know that her competency level is here and you need to bring it up to here. Mm. So now you know what to focus on. I need to give more training to my teachers, how to write emails, how to talk to parents, how to script through those conversations, because that's where my people are struggling. If you don't ask them for options, you have no idea what their skill set is. It doesn't matter what they write in their resume, what they tell you at at an interview. It matters how they show up. And if they don't know how to do that, now you know what you need to focus on with them. 